what happened earlier in the, right before the court was excuse me, due to begin. I'll try to talk up so y'all can hear. Uh, when Mr. Sweat was brought in uh, just uh, prior to going into the courtroom, uh, his lawyers were going to have a meeting. He joined in on that meeting, uh, arguably without being invited to that meeting back away from uh, some of the personnel. It, security was there. There was never a, a realistic chance of him escaping. I don't think that was the uh, probable intent. It is alleged that he produced a uh, weapon, uh, possibly a small razor blade that he had hidden somewhere on his person. He attacked one of his lawyers uh, and inflicted slight injuries around the neck area. There was some blood. The law enforcement officers in attendance uh, did control him. They did a complete search of him, redressed him, and uh, uh, then we went on with court. Uh, he, uh, he likely faces some more charges at this point, obviously. So, what, which, attorney did he, which, which of the attorneys did he attack? Uh, Peter Astor. He did not. He uh, he had some discoloration on his shirt and tie, and didn't want that to influence. It, it makes Excuse me. Nature of his injuries. Uh, slight, but uh, obvious. Uh, Peter Astor was a slight but obvious. Yeah, cuts. There were some cuts. Yes. Blood on his shirt. Is that what you mean by There was some blood. I assume it was his uh, during the uh, <clears throat> control of. Mr. Sweat, uh, he also had some injuries. Did, did he say anything as to what he was doing? I didn't hear anything said. Where were the cuts? On who? On the attorney. Oh. Around the neck area. <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> I can't be sure I have an idea, but uh, one of the uh, law enforcement officers that was there that was trying to quell the situation, I think, did that. It, uh, there is a possibility it was done uh, by Mr. Astor's head hit, going back and hitting. Uh, right now, the in investigation is still open. These are mere allegations. Nothing's uh, been submitted that uh, we can uh, actually call proof. But that's, in essence, what happened. How did, did, you, get a, sort of how did you get a razor blade into, I mean, out of, into the one jail, out of the jail, and into this one? That'll be a part of an investigation that we're going to pursue. Could you describe again? You were saying he was joining in on a meeting he wasn't invited to. How does that work? His, his lawyers were going to have a meeting. It, it was in the area right outside the courtroom. Uh, call it an antechamber, if you will. He, uh, the, His lawyers were going to have a meeting, uh, and he joined them, uh, apparently, uh, arguably thinking that uh, he was uh, to be a part of that meeting. The law enforcement officers accompanied him to that meeting. So did he rush them or run after them? I do not know yet. I, I haven't received that part of the report. Did he attack Mr. Astor from behind? I'm not sure yet. Is there a reason he why? At that time, I don't think he was. I think he had just been uncuffed for court. I'm not sure on that. Is that standard? Does that happen? It is not uncommon to be uncuffed when uh, going into the courtroom, uh, usually with uh, law enforcement personnel in close attendance. Can you describe the injuries to the lawyer again? How, how significant are they? Uh, they are they're not life-threatening. They're slight. He's still around and, and uh, doing fine little shaken up obviously uh, and uh, but it was uh, it was an obvious uh, mark on his neck mm -hmm. slight injury a little bit of blood is there a motive to why he would attack his lawyers that you are aware of I don't know uh, sometimes we find out motives sometimes we don't what do you think about this um, withdrawing of the plea uh, I don't think I can comment on that at this time that's a separate case that uh, that's still a matter of going before the court to be improper to comment on. 